Mara will be tracking the new big Midwestern snowstorm. Will it go north or east for the weekend? In half a minute, we'll be switching back to New York on Good Morning America. Sandy has discovered gold in Peru. Don't wait for someday. Geritol is for now. It's just good sense to take care of yourself now, instead of waiting till later. What you get out of life is what you put into it. That's why I take care of myself, it's like taking a Geritol tablet every morning to make sure I'm getting enough iron and vitamins. Geritol, America's number one iron and vitamin supplement with more than double the iron of any ordinary supplement. Don't wait for someday. Geritol is for now. Geritol, every day. Well, if you were to travel some 200 miles into the uncharted jungle of eastern Peru, you would arrive at the site of a modern-day gold rush. Just last year, the Peruvian government opened up vast tracts of jungle for exploration and for prospecting. And those who've made the trip have really struck it rich. Among the estimated 30,000 Peruvian Indians now in the gold fields, there is one group of Americans. It's called Adventurers Unlimited, and that group has also staked a claim. With us this morning is Paul Berry. He is a member of Adventurers Unlimited, and Pierre Delespinois, yes. I hope, <laughs> television producer who traveled to Peru and filmed their expedition. It's terrific to have you here this morning. Well, it's good to be here. Great. Hey, Paul, how, how big, how vast is this gold rush, this modern-day gold rush? It's big now, and I'd say it's probably going to grow more, get larger. It is. Mm -hmm. How difficult, though, is it to get to the sites where all this gold is being prospected? It's tremendously difficult. Yeah, it's, it's jungle and uh, very little uh, roadways. We, there's only one road that goes into the interior. And you have to remember that you're going over the Andes almost into the borders of Bolivia to mm -hmm. get to this particular area. Mm -hmm. And I understand that where you find bridges, generally they really aren't there, and you have to build them as you traverse the They're not bridges waterways. as we know them. They're generally logs and you know, possibly a plank across the board, to the logs. Well, let's take a look at some of the film, Pierre, that okay. you shot while, while you were over there I with think, the expedition. Well, I think the first thing you're going to see is the beginning when they walked in. And this is just a quick segment to show how deep the jungle was. And you can see that we had, they had to walk in and <coughs> see guns. They had to arm themselves not only against the creatures that live in the jungle, such as snakes and anacondas and jaguars, but this is a gold expedition. And they had to clear their camp by chopping down the bamboo and actually living in the jungle. And here you see them building platforms and burning off the insects, which, uh, I mean, the insects oh. down there are huge. And these parrots live in the trees above. This is an Amazon parrot. This was about three feet long. And uh, there's Paul, and there are the tents in the background. But these... Uh, a tree above us had 17 Amazon parrots that lived in, right in the tree. Oh. So it was absolutely spectacular as far as scenery. You, you would have the magnificence of some of the creatures and then the others, the insects and the snakes, the just insects, trying to devour you. Uh, ah. The insects were amazing. I wasn't prepared for that. Some of the things are big as my hand. Oh, c biting ones? Tarantulas. I oh, mean, I remember yes. one morning grabbing mm -hmm. my shirt and having a tarantula run out. And that's quite a traumatic experience if you're from the city and not used to it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Those are the ones you so. recognize, that's Sandy. Right. The other ones, you don't even know what they are. <laughs> uh, now, what about actually panning for the gold? Uh, well, yes, want well, we have some okay, footage we'll that should show us them. that here. All right, this is mm -hmm. a Peruvian pan. Uh, the Indians pan this way, and uh, Paul's group did it differently, but we tried it this way. And you can see it's quite successful. If you notice, again, there's an armed guard, just to make sure of wild animals and bandits. And is here, there a lot is, of that Wild West as we it is. have it read really, about? It's just kind of like the California atmosphere. gold rush. I mean, it's going to be that way. And this is basically how they do it. They grab the dirt on the side. They look for placer gold, and which is small flakes. And there you see a couple of small chips of gold. It's really a laborious the process, it then, is. isn't it? Oh, it is. But if a panel like this could get maybe $200 a day, and for a proven Indian, that's a great amount of money for them. And that's in, more than they would probably make in two or three months. So, I mean, uh, it is real. It is there. And that's what surprised me as, as, as a crew, too, that it was really gold. But it's not inconceivable, then, for this Peruvian Indian or for anyone else to actually make $200 a day in terms of just panning there with a... Well, remember the price of gold. Well, you certainly. Know, you're talking probably 14 grams in a day. Oh, my gosh. Which isn't that difficult. But, of course, there are some more sophisticated means that are being used also yes. there in terms of dredging yes. with the Yes, uh, this the is what equipment. we tried to do. Okay. Uh, this was 
uh, an amazing part of the journey was that they tried to bring in modern technology into an area. If you realize that this, the ink getting those the over the one, roads, have uh, got it. Here's a generator, and what they do is this stream is only ankle deep, and they, the gold is heavy, so it settles to the bottom bottom of the river streams, and to get it, they have to remove all the dirt. As you can see, the water is muddy. And down at the bottom, that's the nozzle of the, this dredge that sucks up the whole river bottom. And out of this, you can, you can see that there's a good chance of grabbing these big nu nuggets when you get to the bottom of the riverbed. And here we see Philip Miller, the leader of the group, grab a nugget. Uh, there that's in his about hand. 18, that's... Remember, this is ankle deep, and now they're about 18 feet down, so they settle quite deep. And look at the size of that nugget. How much do you suppose that's worth? That's about three or four ounces, and because of its Ooh, size, boy, it's probably 12, worth three 16. times, twice to three times its value as gold. So it's probably about two, three thousand dollars at one piece. Oh my God! To a collector, yes. So I'm surprised you came back. Oh, we, Sandy, here's well, a closer look at the kind of thing that uh, you know, I've drives never... men mad. Hold up. And both, women. Both hands, both are there hands. are there any? Hold oh, up, both, both hands. You've got that much. That. Oh my goodness! It's really how much? How much worth of gold am I? holding here. In quite these. a bit. Look at yeah. this. Quite a bit. These, these nuggets. Oh, over there you are. I'm sorry. Look at that. They're what? not painted either, no, are they? Those are real. <laughs> it's these not are, fool's these gold, are, folks. It's a real two thing. Or th two or three ounce nuggets. And nuggets Isn't of this size something? are of uh, a value, more of a value than the worth of gold because they're, this is natural. This is how you find it. It's this shiny when you see it. Really? And, uh, that must have been such an experience for you the first time you were panning in there and actually fever. pulled it out. Oh. I, w I was behind the camera and watching this when they were pulling these things out, and I mean, it was a lot of times a choice between filming and panning. It was, you know... <laughs> well, you really. almost lost your crew, didn't you, to gold fever? At least yes, that's what I've been yes. told. It was, I remember everyone, I turned around and said, roll tape, and there's someone over there picking up a rock looking in the rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. Uh, Paul, you are going back. Oh, yes, definitely. And, and, and how much do you suppose you're oh, going to be... Oops. Here's, this is what happened. The rainy season came. And that's, you stay too long. And as you can see, that little 18-inch river now is r rapaging. You have flash floods. They lost all their equipment, their dredges, their diving equipment, and a flash flood took everything. Then the matter became one of not finding gold, but getting back out of the jungle. Survival. And that was survival, and it really does. I mean, we lost a, a lot of weight, and the only thing that we had to sustain on the last week was a 50-pound box of animal crackers. Which I don't know where they came from, but uh, that's what we had. To eat. Gold, you were simply <laughs> dust oh. then. <laughs> you one of those that's crackers. Right. I just, I just must ask you, how much you expect you can get out of there when you go back using these sophisticated means per week? How much money? How much gold? In money? Yeah. Well, it's it's hard to say, but it's it's a multi-million dollar operation. Millions of dollars a week. When it is probably. finally underway. I'll we just did, keep these, the Paul, and I'll see you next time you come. Sure, to stop in any time, Sandy. <laughs> it was a pleasure. Good what an experience. You. Nice to see you, too. We're going to be back.